President Jimmy Carter was known for his love of peanuts, but man can't live on legumes alone. So what Southern staple was his favorite to make while he was in the White House? In 1976, the New York Times revealed just how much Jimmy Carter loved dairy products. He ate butter and crackers as a snack, drank milk every day, and loved buttermilk, too. But his favorite thing to eat was cheese. Carter's sister, Gloria Spann, told the newspaper that growing up, he loved to eat cheese sandwiches. He loved cheese so much that he incorporated it into his other favorite food, grits. Carter loves a creamy bowl of cheese grits. His daughter Amy told the Times, Daddy makes grits for breakfast, then breaks a couple of eggs into it and adds some cheese, and it's yummy. According to an aide, Carter never ate huge portions, but whatever he was served, he ate without objection. Besides grits and other cheesy goodness, the Carter family diet includes lots of fresh vegetables, simply prepared meats, and homemade fare. Carter has his wife Rosalind to thank for maintaining the balance without a compromise. He told the Washington Post, She is a strict dietitian and a very good cook. She makes all our family meals. Besides eating a variety of nutritious foods, Carter says he maintains his vitality by being physically active and keeping himself busy with chores and hobbies at home. He probably doesn't pair it with his grits, but Jimmy Carter also enjoys a glass of wine from time to time. According to the 2014 book Mint Juleps with Teddy Roosevelt, The Complete History of Presidential Drinking, the former president isn't a huge drinker, so he would usually opt for white wine when giving toasts. He was the first president that would only allow American-produced wine in the White House, and he was also the first one to ban spirits from the White House, outside of the Prohibition era. All White House functions would end at midnight. No hard liquor would be served. Despite not having a big taste for it himself, he helped push beer production in 1978 by allowing Americans to make their own wine and beer. In 2005, Carter actually took up winemaking in his free time. In an interview with Wine Spectator, he explained that his love of the craft stems from a family tradition. He said, My grandfather made wine on a very large scale. He had about 15 acres of grapes in Georgia, and he made all of that into wine, which is a lot of wine. Though the recipes were passed down, Carter didn't exactly use the same tried-and-true methods, he explained. I've modified the recipe dramatically because in the past, you had a lot of sugar left over with a very sweet wine. Of course, not everybody shares the same tastes as Jimmy Carter, so during state dinners, he'd have to switch things up to accommodate the masses. The selections changed dramatically depending on who the White House was hosting. When former Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau dined with the Carter administration, the dinner included Alaskan king crab, roast stuffed saddle of lamb, and three wine selections. Louis Martini Cabernet Sauvignon, Saint Michel Chounon Blanc, and Bolio Extra Dry. When British Prime Minister James Callaghan visited, the menu included Atlantic sea scallop soup, roast rib of beef, and Yorkshire pudding, among others. Creating the perfect menu for a White House celebration would unsurprisingly be anxiety-provoking, and managing the presidents and their families' particular tastes would be the most challenging aspect of the job, according to President Carter's White House chef, Henry Haller. Originally hired in 1966 by President Lyndon B. Johnson, who dined on lobster Thermidor, Haller served five presidents, including Richard Nixon, who had a penchant for polenta. But despite being chosen from a plush hotel restaurant in New York, he still had no trouble cooking President Carter's favorite homestyle country food.